Well guys, here it is, the biggest change to Wrath of the Lich King so far. Activision is adding in a new system that allows long cooldowns to refresh after an encounter ends in a raid. Massive change. Any cooldown of two minutes or more will reset when an encounter ends with a couple exceptions like Reincarnation, Ritual of Doom, Astral Recall, and Lay on Hands. But that means that Bloodlust, Heroism, these are going to be included and will be reset with each encounter. Now, this is mainly because, you know, when you wipe during progression, you're sitting around waiting for cooldowns to come back so that you can hit it again full power with all your cooldowns ready, right? Don't want to go into a fight without your cooldowns ready. Now, with this change, no wait is going to be required because when you wipe, the encounter ends and you get all of your cooldowns back with those exceptions, right? Now, with this change... Uh, this also is going to mean that the sated or exhausted debuff is going to be removed from your character when the encounter with the raid boss ends, right? So that you're not just getting the spell cooldown back, you're also going to be able to benefit from it again. And they're going to also make it so that the sated exhausted debuff is going to persist through death to prevent anyone from trying to abuse the ability by intentionally dying and then getting another hit of that bloodlust, right, for their parse or whatever other reason they might want to abuse that. Now, speaking of abusing abilities, Activision is also implementing another system which audits your buffs periodically and makes sure that you don't have any that you shouldn't have for your spec in party or raid composition. This is crazy. So if you spec into Improved Blessing of Might, uh, in one spec and then you use it on yourself and then you switch specs to one without that talent, this system will prevent you from having that improved blessing of might. Now the system also will check if you have a priest buff and if there's no priest in your party or raid, well that buff will not be retained with this new system. However, the system won't remove these buffs if you are outside of an instance or using um, a single target buff. So let's say you're passing by someone in the open world, you know, you're a good guy, you give them power word fortitude. This system is not going to remove that buff unless they go and enter in an instance or a party. Uh, and then in that case, this this buff auditing system would, would strip that buff off. Now, my thoughts on this system, it's sort of 50-50. I like when things are introduced to stop players from abusing mechanics that honestly only someone who's super try hard would try to abuse, right? Like, all right, everyone buff me up before I go do this, right? Um, I mean, sometimes it's fun to do. I like I've seen some boosters get thorns before before they go do a boost or something, right? Or like a, like a paladin. But at the same time, I do also like having buffs I shouldn't have from someone passing by in the open world, and I'm like awesome you know i got mark of the wild that's gonna help me on my leveling journey and sometimes i want to bring that into a dungeon and it kind of sucks to have all the buffs that you quote shouldn't have uh taken off if you're not really like abusing it right you're not going around and say hey, everyone buff me up before i go do this right but overall it's not really a big deal in my opinion i think overall it's good to stop people from abusing things so overall you know, not bad. Now, in other news, Hunter Melee Weaving will not be in Wrath Classic as per patch 335. Performing a melee attack resets the Hunter's range swing timer and performing an auto shot resets the Hunter's melee swing timer. So melee weaving, this was actually very strong while it existed, especially when the Hunter is carrying around a big two-handed weapon. And while we're talking patch 335, we have news that players who have turned off experience gains will not be put into a separate battleground queue as those who did not. It's pretty exciting. Uh, this was actually originally done because players who turn off XP gains, these are people who are literally twinked out with the most amazing, crazy good gear for their level. And everyone else is just trying to have some fun, you know, doing <laughs> low level PVP and gain some experience at the same time, right? So. People who like making twinks probably are going to love this change. They, they're going to totally love it because there's going to be a lot of fresh blood in these battlegrounds, in my opinion, to dominate. And I think that's probably a good change because it might encourage more people who weren't into decking out their low-level characters to actually go ahead and do that, right? They might see, like, wow, there's a lot of people doing this. Uh, I think I'm going to take part. Um, and I think that's only, it's only a good thing for this niche part of the game because there's not that many people that do it, in my opinion. Um, but on the flip side, 
uh, no, you know, people, players, knowing that there's OP, like, characters in their battleground in the low-level brackets, you know, that might discourage them from even queuing up at all. So ultimately, we're going to see how that plays out. Now, if you are an auction house junkie on a high population server, you know that there are times of the day that are nearly impossible to post items. Activision has finally acknowledged this, mentioning that add-ons doing full auction house scans are part of the problem and that the throttles that were added in TBC helped, but they are going to be improving the throttles to directly target the behaviors and add-ons uh, that allow players who um, that are basically causing the players who use the native UI to be less impacted by players using add-ons. Now this is actually really cool and I think it's actually really smart because if an auction house add-on is inefficient, right, it's slowing the servers down, Blizzard or Activision will directly target that player in that add-on and it'll basically not work well, right? It's getting throttled. And so players will look for an alternative, better auction house add-on that's faster. And if it's efficient, that means Blizzard won't throttle it. It'll work faster. And then word will spread amongst the community that this is the add-on to use, which then incentivizes add-on authors to make their add-on the most efficient and therefore the most used. This seems like win, win, win to me. And, you know, honestly, I think it's definitely something worth addressing because I can't believe how slow the auction house has gotten lately. Literally cannot post items at certain times of the day when the server's at peak. So very, very cool. Now, another big change coming to Wrath Classic is that heartbeat resists have been removed from Arena. The wording in the blue post is actually hilarious. And I quote, We've decided to make a small adjustment and completely remove this in Arena. <laughs> <laughs> Small adjustment. Crowd control, in my opinion, is so huge in arena, really in PvP in general, and I hate the element of luck in PvP, so good job on this change. I think uh, this is definitely going to you know, make you know, things more predictable and require more skill. Also, Activision's new group finder tool that, you know, is 50-50 uh, in terms of popularity, uh, is going to be adding an additional feature which is called the new player friendly flag. This is something that players can use to indicate that their group is welcoming to less experienced players. Now, it sounds like most people are going to use this as like red flag, avoid these people, right? But but you know what? I actually think it could honestly be very helpful. If if you personally are looking for, you know, a chill group of people who are friendly, you know, whatever, I think anyone who says they are new player friendly is probably not going to be griefing your group. They're not going to be ninjing. They're not going to be toxic. And this new player flag might actually be a good way to find like, look, I just don't want to deal with ninjas, griefers, or toxic people. Maybe I'll just throw on that new player friendly flag because, you know, tryhards probably will like avoid those, <laughs> those groups. So it could be good thing. And the last major announcement is that the new communal gear equivalent for Wrath will be called Collective, which your boosted level 70 will come equipped with. From what we can see online, it actually looks exactly the same as the communal gear. Not sure if that's final, but of course, it's much more powerful level 70 green gear. 